Uh, let me see. It's going to be all right. Okay? Amen. Again, we was on last week. We was talking about how God propels us and how he pushes us to our destiny in life. Amen. He causes things to happen in our life that cause us to be what he wants us to be in life. Amen. I shared with you on last week that <clears throat> is how uh, how Samuel was mourning over Saul. Yeah, right. yeah, yes. Saul is dead. You know, well, God didn't want Saul over his people no way, but people wanted that. Amen. That's why I say you're very, very good. That's saying, be careful what you ask for, what you wish for. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because they wanted a king, but at that time, God didn't want them to have a king. He said, I got the prophets there, and I want you all to understand, I got the prophets because I speak through the prophets to my people. Amen. I'm not speaking to kings, no, but I'm speaking to the prophet to my people. I got a designated person that I want to use to get my point of call because they know my word. They understand my word. They read it already. They know my laws. Amen. And yeah, but the king doesn't know how I think because I didn't put it in their hearts. I put it in the prophet's heart. Amen. Praise God. And so we, that's how God was intended for us, his people, to, to follow the man of God. But finding out that other nations had kings and they wanted one too. Amen. I want the Jones guy. Yeah, the Jones guy. In other words, you don't know how he got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He might have stole what he got. He might have cheated for what he got. Yeah, he might have manipulated for what he got. So you be careful about how, how the Jones this guy. Yeah, they ain't gonna tell you the truth no way how they got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise God. Yeah, but you see, you so safe and we so safe the morning night. And, 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 and if you hit the lottery, you definitely ain't gonna tell us that's how you got your money. Now y'all don't know that. Yeah, yeah, I got blessed, Pastor. Oh, listen, I got blessed, Pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, man, I won't be on TV. He might, he might get a ticket to somebody or go to Yeah, yeah. Because you don't want nobody how you got it. Hey, Amen. Praise God. Right, it's all good. Hey, Amen. And so, here he's. He's mourning over something God has already rejected. God said, man, how long are you going to sit there and mourn over something? I don't want. Right, so I'm just making a correction right now. Yeah, he's got to be off the scene because he's king. He's been anointed already to be what he is, so he's got to serve his time out. Am I right? How many know you got when you're anointed, you got to serve your time out? Whether you like it or not, you're going to serve your time out. Amen. You're not going nowhere until your time. Yeah, I don't care how the doctor done told you and threw in the towel on you, but you're not going anywhere until God said, it's your time. Because I've anointed you for a purpose. And it's going, and I'm going to work it through you in my time. Amen. But it's a process. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word. When he said, well, look now, I already got somebody who's going to take Saul's place. Why are you mourning over something? I got a man already yeah, just, just waiting in the way so I can move him to his next level. Amen? Praise God. And so here he's got David. Amen? He's telling the good on the old man Jesse. I'm just bringing y'all who wouldn't hear last week up today. Just summarize it. He go around to Jesse's house. He got some boys down there, but I want you to take a horn of oil, anointing oil, and I want you to anoint the right one for king. Amen? Yeah, you're not going to know who he is. I'm not going to tell you who he is, but you're going to know it when they all fall from the horn. Amen? And I said on last week that they all had no sense to the man. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, yeah. 
because as he pours, he holds it an open container over the boy's head, but they all won't come out. Miracle. You see, God at work. Am I right? Yeah, because God already know who I got in mind, but y'all looking on the outside because the first one uh, appears to him and he looks at me. I know you the one. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. God had to remind him that you looking at his countenance. Yeah, you looking at how big and tall and how strong he look. He got a, a physique, you know. He, he built, look like he a man of war, but uh, but we get hard. It's not a leader. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so now he brings another one in. He begins, it's not him. So in, everyone that appears before uh, the prophet realizes it ain't him, and the prophet gets all disturbed and begins to see, well, God, it ain't pouring out on nobody. I wonder if I'm missing you now. Have you ever had a mission, God? <laughs> and you're like, did I miss you? Because it's not happening like I thought it should happen. Hallelujah. And so here he began to ask Jesse, you, you got, do you have another son? Good thing he asked that question, do you have a right? What if he wouldn't ask the question? Yeah, that wasn't God speaking to me. That was, but yeah, I got to know. He's out minding the flock, the sheep. He's, he's out there shepherding the sheep. He's watching over because God is teaching him to be a good shepherd. How I many you know your occupation causes you in, in, in whatever it, in, in your occupation? Many a time God is using that to move you to a, a whole other level. Amen. Yeah. 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 Whatever you do, I'll use you because I got you there for a purpose. But you don't know how to deal with people. You don't know how to be a good shepherd. You know what it takes to do the job. Am I right? right? That's why you have to put people in areas that know how to handle people. Did y'all get that? Yeah. Amen? Yeah, it's amazing how stuff happens to you on the job that you had an opportunity to deal with people even in here. Amen. Yeah, they got on your nerves on the job and they're going to get on your nerves in here. Yeah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is things begin to happen to us even on our daily occupation. God begin to, in other words, now you see you can deal with the public. You can uh, deal with people in here, but I can use you out there too. Am I right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. So here's what God knowing David's heart. That's the thing. He knew his heart. He knew how he protected the sheep. He knew how he loved the sheep. In other words, he puts his life in danger because you know that the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Am I right? Amen. Yeah, and so he lays down his life. He goes to prove that with the lion in the bed. He's willing to risk his life for the sheep. Amen. Oh God, help us on the ghost. He's willing to do what he's got to do to protect the sheep. Even though it's dangerous, but he's doing what he needs to do to preserve life. Oh, God, help us, Holy Ghost. Yeah, he's preserving life. That's what the shepherd does. He's so concerned and so in love with the sheep that he's willing to go after the enemy. On the phone for the sake of the hood, she mm -hmm. might cost him his own blood, but I'm going to do what I got to do. Hallelujah. Do y'all believe that today? And so here's David, been anointed, yet wasn't ready for the position. Did y'all get that? 
yeah, man, the children will say it, and then that old not going back and moving forward, that old, the sanctification process that has to go forward. Amen. Amen. He's anointed, yet the position is not there for him yet. God already know the plan and purpose he has for his life, but the time ain't yet. I, I, I don't understand the thing yet, but I don't even know why Sam even anointed me, but it's for a plan and a purpose and a time. Time. Time and plays everything in this life. Am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We want God to move on our time. But he don't move on our time. He moves in his own good time. Because God came to your aid every time you call for him, and then the minute you get your, your breakthrough, then you're going back to doing the same old thing. <laughs> but y'all believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. So God causes us to, to go to allow us to feel the pain in a while so we can experience and learn from it. Amen? Praise God. And so now, here's David, anointed, <laughs> ready. For whatever he's got to know, God has anointed him to take him through whatever he's about to go through. Yeah, and see, God ain't telling the whole story to Samuel yet, but the plan and purpose that he really has for David is a great plan. Amen. Hallelujah. You gotta understand now that there's two kingdoms. You got a north, northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. You got the Israel kingdom and you got the Judah kingdom. Hallelujah. So here's God need a king for his people. Are oh, y'all still with me? Hallelujah. You got to understand the kingdom is divided. And how I many you know before God can, the presence of God can come back, you got to come back together. We must operate in unison. Up to the heart divided against itself. Can you stand? Can y'all see all this? Yeah, yeah. So the next time you hear about David and Michelle is when Goliath shows up. The enemy. He's anointed, but he has an enemy he has to deal with. Before he can get to the position God has before him. Oh God. Yeah, he's got to fight something bigger than he is. Not knowing that God, not knowing he's going to even be in the fight because they're already in a fight, but he's not even included in the fight at the time. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah, his daddy just said, go down and bring your brother some to this ain't my fight. Man. I'm too young to be out here. And the brother said, you too young. See how that enemy tried to tell you. You too young. We tried to tell the baby, y'all too young. And God said, no, they just right. And so he said, go bring your brother something to eat. Yes, you don't know who Goliath is. In other words, the Philistine had their champion, but how many know David? <laughs> Don't know he is about to be a champion. A champion of God. <laughs> you yourself don't know already that you're about to be a champion. But it's going to be in God, you're going to be the champion. Because what you're going to have to deal with, you're going to get through it because now, God said, I can use you now. But I got to get some things. I got to, you must be proven for the position. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, I want to do this, Pastor. I like to do this, Pastor. I want to do this. I, 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 I'm, I'm anxious to do this and that, that. But are you ready to be proved for the position, the testing? Amen. Can you put up with what this one puts up with? How's your attitude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Can you deal with? People in general. 
Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yeah, you're going to get proven before God can put you out there. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Yes, yes, yes. But you have to be taught to be proven. Even in, in the animal kingdom, those, those mothers, they train the cubs how to hunt. Because one day they're going to leave the clan. They're going to leave the group. They won't be there. But they, they have to be trained how to hunt on their own. And she realizes she's going to watch them to they are able to take out prey. And she's not even around. Did y'all see that? When she realized it, she said, now it's time for me to move on. Because they've been proven they can take half of themselves in the wild. Amen? They can stay alive in the wild. God just says the same way. When we've been proven, now they ready to go for it. Do y'all believe that? Hallelujah. And so here, let's go lie in. He's bragging. He's talking about what he's going to do. No, he was talking some trash, y'all. Yes, he's an enemy as a good trash talk. Yeah, he mess with that mind all the time, don't he? Talking trash. Have us believe in our own selves. The trash he's talking. Am I in the house? You know how he lied to us. We're still lying. Same, strong, I don't care how annoying that you are, he talked trash. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, telling you, the Lord's telling you ain't gonna live, you're gonna die, you're gonna do this, you will never be nothing, and this ain't happening, and that ain't happening, and there's more trash talking. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's to get it in our what? Spirits. When the scripture said, in other words, I'm gonna tell us to encourage ourselves, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm a brother, not the me. I'm going to be the lender and not the boy. Yes. I choose to read the report of God over what the enemy has told me. Yeah, there's many reports out there. But I'm going to choose to, to believe what God said about me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And so now he's, he, Goliath uh, uh, shows up now, he had come David back on the scene again. He's got to take out the enemy so he can be propelled and pushed to what God is calling him because I, my nation is divided, but I got to bring them back together. Can y'all see that? Yeah, I got a northern king. Because when I told Abraham, I'm going to bless his seed, I didn't tell him they'd be divided. Am I right? But I had to bring them back together because I either be Lord over all or not Lord at all. Can y'all see that? Yeah, yeah. See, the presence of God can't even come back in until they come back together. Oh, God. Can y'all see that? Remember they took the offer to come. No longer waiting which represented the presence of God. You have to get that back. Come on, Bill. Oh, boy. Oh, y'all see him one go. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. But God had a plan and purpose for David. And it had to be him as king to bring back his presence among his people. But right now, they're not together. They must be brought back together before the presence can even come in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Oh, God. And so, um, David goes up against Goliath from last week's sermon. Wins the battle with the help of God and the power of God. When David doing it, it was God doing it. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Yeah, we like to talk about the rock and the sling shot, the shepherd's sling and the rock, and the rock was Jesus. Amen. That just wasn't any rock. I don't care how many he got out of the brook. But Jesus was the rock. Did y'all get that? Yeah, yeah, you like to see this fire smooth stone, but did they take what one was Jesus in that stone? Did y'all hear that? Yeah, one rock, one slain, <laughs> and, it hit, and it hit the top. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think David was intended to use all five of them on Goliath. Yeah, because Goliath had some brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just in case. <laughs> yeah, just in case. I don't intend to miss with this one. But just in case they gonna raise their head up. I'm waiting on them too. Cause I got God on my side. Bring it on. That's all he said. Bring it on. Yeah, yeah, bring it on. Hallelujah. So he slew, slew his enemy. Now he's been elevated to a higher level. Notice now. He's been elevated. Yeah, he's come marching in the town with that with, with, with Goliath's head shaking it. He was shouting. Saul, Saul slew a thousand, David ten thousand. Am I right? In other words, now everybody's looking at him again. But how do you know the enemy was setting him up again? Because Saul didn't like the chant the people were saying. In other words, if you want to make enemies, you want haters, just start, let somebody pat you on the back, give you a little encouragement. They start hating you. Look like they should have been ha happy for you. But it turns on you. You think that people want to be glad about what's, how God is blessing you? You say, you sadly mistaken. There are those that let, uh, rejoice with you, but there are going to be those that hate you. Because of what God is doing for you and through you. Do y'all see that? Hallelujah. And so, he is chanting and so all of a sudden now his heart, his heart gets better. I got to get him. I got to take him out. You get too much praise. I'm the king here. Hallelujah. And I, 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 I Lord, in other words, I'm anointed king here. And thank God that David honored that. He didn't get big headed over the thing, but he honored God's anointing. Did y'all get that? He didn't go and install faith. Go and install faith. Hey, I'm the king. Now, I, I, I flew the king. You, you give me all your stuff and everybody looking at me. Now, he didn't, he didn't talk here. He respected the office of the king. Yeah. He didn't want the glory because he knew the only reason he accomplished what he did is because of God. All your little compliments you think you got on your own, you sadly mistaken, is on God. Yeah. 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 Well, I said, when you know who you are in Christ, you don't have to brag on it or go before anybody. You somebody, man, a woman of God. You already know who you are in Christ. Yeah. I don't have to brag on it. He said, praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, now I know, I already know. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, why would I be? 
if he wouldn't on my side. I can't move, can't breathe without him. Hallelujah. Well, God help us. Praise God. Turn to 2 Samuel 5th chapter. I brought you up to date. That's what I want to start. This chapter around the first verse. And then I'm going yeah, to jump to the sixth chapter right quick. Hey, Amen. We're going to yeah, go from there. Yeah, I'm almost finished, y'all. Believe it or not. Second Samuel, fifth chapter, I believe. Yeah, around the first verse. Yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, we all got a microphone. Let me give it to my sister right quick. Amen. I like the way she reads, she get excited. Yeah, no reading in the volume right quick. Thank you. Yeah, yeah she get all excited like me. Amen. Start reading that word. Amen. Yeah, I might not, I might not know how to pronounce every word, but she do. You know? <laughs> yeah, I might start, I might start mumbling something. That that ain't right. Y'all can't put it on me now, all right? Yeah, go ahead, sis. Just press that button, that's all. Right. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David and to Hebron and spoke, saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Oh, we, we, we related. Y'all are Jewish and we Israel, and we, we related to one another. Through Abraham's seed, we can. Flesh and blood. Flesh and bone. We got the same DNA. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Also, in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were he who led out and brought in Israel. In other words, when Saul was king over Israel, and you over Judah or uh, Hebron, Amen. Y'all, in other words, when he was king, he's dead now. And we need a leader. We need a king. It's not all. Y'all divided yourself. God didn't do it. That's y'all do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God promised Abraham to his feet. Y'all got to be one, first of all. Before we can even go far, we are even God to say it. And anything we do, we must be as one. Yeah. Together, harmony. Hallelujah. Operate as a chain. Together. Holding tight to everything. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. And sister. the Lord said to you, you shall feed my people Israel, and you shall be a captain over Israel. No, words, you're going to be a captain over them too. God has, in other words, God has prophesied this already. Hallelujah. But because of evil kings, they got separated. Amen. Evil people causes separation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Even in our own families. We can be close knit people when we were children. We can wonder what happened at our late age. As we got older, you start thinking the way you want to think, allowing the enemy to cause you to think the wrong thing, and now as a whole family, I'm talking about your immediate family. What happened? We have a sin out of wheel. We think about it. what happened. We played together. We went places together. We ate together. We did all these things together. But all of a sudden, what happened? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody got mad at you. We read to beat him up for you. But now you read to beat me up. Am I right? It's, it's real. It's real. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't talking on 
somebody told me, I'll tell you who they spoke. Yeah. Praise the devil. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so they got divided. Go ahead, sister. Verse 3. So all the elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. Now he's anointed again by the elders this time. See how God is putting things in place. Yes. He just didn't take the position, but they had to lay hands on him and begin to give him the position back to play his rightful place. He just didn't come in by force to eat it, did he? He didn't come and say, look, Saul did. Now, I've been anointed to be king now. Y'all got to make me king. No, they called him. That's humbling yourself. See how God does us. He, we have to humble ourselves before God can move us to the next level. Now, who's propelling, propelling or pushing him? Is God propelling David to be what he called him to be from the old star? King over all of Israel. Not part, but the whole nine yards. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because now, until they come back together, I cannot, they cannot get my presence until it happens. My plan is for him to be king. From Goliath, my enemy that I face is what got me to where I am at the day. But I had to fight the giants in my life. His father, Saul, tried to take me out many times. He was sitting there playing music because the Bible said that Saul would get disturbed by demon spirits. Evil spirits would be messing with his mind and he couldn't sit still because he would be vexed by demon spirits. And that's a bad thing. And so David there would start playing this harp and, and, and every time he would play the harp and the music would be so anointed that them spirits, I got to get out of here. That's why it's good to have praise and worship. Did y'all hear that? Yeah, I don't mean when the storm of life will raise you need to uh, stand by me. I mean how great is our God. Yeah. Yeah. Name above all names. Why did to be prayed? And that word the devil said, I got to get out of here. I can't hang around here. Why did the lamb of it? Yeah. Where it is the lamb? Yeah. That was how I got to get out of here. Yeah, he talking about the Lamb of God. That was that puts me in the mind of the blood of Jesus. And when I think about that blood, I, I know the blood does. Yeah, yeah. I'm praying about the blood of Jesus. God, cover me by your blood. Cover my home by your blood. I got to get out of this house. Yeah, I know that blood. That blood got me in trouble. Yeah, I thought I was taking him out, but. That blood got me in trouble. Yeah, because when he, he died on the cross, now, boy, oh, he opened it, he opened up the heavens to anybody that accepted that Lord and saved him. Now, I got to get out of this house because the blood of Jesus is, is covered with his blood. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So now he, David, over there playing music just to calm him down, and he started looking over there, throwing chapter there. Trying to take the man. The very thing that God is using them to help you with, you're trying to get it. I like what the Holy Spirit just said. The very people that God used to help you, how are you trying to get it? Yeah. 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 Now, we might not kill them with a gun, but you kill them with the tongue. Yeah. And y'all hear what God is saying. Hallelujah. And so, he's, he's coming. He's had to run for his life. But again, God had anointed him for a purpose. 
I need to get the presence back among my people. Because as long as they divide it, the words stay out of order. I'm a God of order. So everything has to be in order before I can come in with the make order. Get the order, all right? Lead on, sis. Verse 4. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. That was, he was six and Read the next verse to her. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. See, how does he have? He's just over seven years and what, six months, just over Judah. Judah. Mm -hmm. See, over, he's king over Judah now, but not Israel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, he, and in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. In other words, now, he's giving you the total year that David reigned. Okay, totally before he dies. At the age of 30, he began at Hebron, but now he goes to uh, uh, Israel at 33 and so, and so, you know, years, now 40 years. Hallelujah. He reigned, okay, before David at 70 years old, he dies. Okay, but let's go, I, 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 I said all that for friends, all right, so y'all know how long he reigned. You know, I heard a preacher say David lived to be 101 years old. I told him he didn't. Yeah, amen. I mean, you can bite into that, but because he had it two years wrong, okay? But it was 40 years and 70 years. At the age of 70, David died. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Now, go to the sixth chapter right like quick, says. Yeah. Yeah, yeah about the come. Hallelujah. Six and one? Yeah, I think. Hold on. Let me make sure I got it. Six and one, I believe, I'm on me. Put my glasses on. Verse 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, mm -hmm. 30,000. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Bailey of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts who dwells between the cherubim. Now, now notice what he's doing now. That it made him king over both Judah and Israel. Because they had captured the ark of the presence of God. Amen? Had it in a place the way it shouldn't have been. Remember they said Dagon was an idol, was a false uh, uh, idol God they had created. Puts the ark of the covenant right next to Dagon. And the Bible said that that head fell off that image. God said, me and idolatry don't mix. Can't stay in my presence if it's not of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We got to get the ark back. This is David talking about. Let's go up and get this ark. We need the presence of God back. We just came back together. He's got to be Lord over all of us. Hallelujah. You may be a witness. Yeah, yeah. Now, I might switch on you now, sir. That's why I said, when I tell Keith and hit it, he's he going to hit the same song on the baby or something. All right? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. If I say, you know, don't forget it now, Keith. If I say, hit the key, you're going to know. Now, Trent ain't going to know, but you're going to know. See, I just want to to play some song now, but, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That 
so he says, Oh God. You read the second verse already? Yeah, yeah. In other words, and David wrote it with all the people. In other words, we go in and get the presence of God. We're going to get it back. Yeah. How can we make it without the presence of God? After all, we are what well, we are because of Him. It's through Abraham's seed that we are. And God said, I'm going to watch over y'all. Because y'all belong to me. That's benefit. His presence. His anointing. Do y'all believe that today? Yes. Next verse says, come on. Third verse. And they set the ark of God upon a new car. Notice now they set on a new car. But they should have been on a new car. See, that's what happens when you uh, get out of the will of God. You begin to forget what the word of God has said. Because after all, they were always supposed to talk it by hand. Never put it on the cart. That was the easy way to put it on a new cart, but God didn't tell them y'all was going to be carrying this thing. And only the Levites could carry the priesthood. And they decided to put it on a new cart. Build something with wheels on it. And thought that was okay with God. Be careful when you think everything is okay with God. Because God gives specific orders. And we must follow His instructions. Oh, God, help us. Go ahead, sister. And brought it out of the house of Abinadad that was in Gibeah. And Uzziah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadad, drove the new court. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadad which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments. They had all kind of music. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? We call ourselves instruments of praise. That's what the Bible says in 150 Psalms. Let everything that had breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh God. Whatever we touch, just like they touch you know, this from this, we're making music. God touched us one day. When he created man, man, and he touched him and he formed him with his hands so that an instrument yeah yeah my, my daughter had a saxophone I tell her to blow because the instrument the fact, he blew it to man that sax makes some music am I right it makes a sound. And once he blew into man, man became a living being. A soul. Instruments of what? Praise. So whenever we go and touch, we become instruments of praise and worship. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Yes. So, the Lord walked no matter what instruments made of. Look at yourself. I'm made of. I'm an instrument of praise and worship. I love to praise God with all that's within me. Hallelujah. Read on, sister. Made of fir wood, even on harps 
and on psalteries and on timbrels and on coronets and on cymbals. With the cymbals! Hit them cymbals, Key. Hit them all. Yeah, you can't hit it with the breath. Hit him, hit him, hit him with the. You, you, you can switch back to your breath, but hit him with the, hit him with the stick. The sound and symbols. Tell me, God don't like music. God ain't got a problem with music. This is the time you live. Y'all know we like peace, don't we? Yeah, you like to sh shake your shoulder and know it. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. All you got to do is write music. Yeah, you start. And you can see how the devil would plan the heart and how the demons had to get out of there. cause you to do what you do. Instruments of praise. I thought you know what I'm going through. I just got to worship you now. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. To let out all kind of instruments. To we go and get the presence of God back in Israel. That was Holy Ghost. Read on, says. Verse 6. And when they came to Nashon's threshing floor, Uzziah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Mm, here's a man, in other words, put his hand on the ark, but he loses his life. Read on, I, I got the hand. And, the. and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzziah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. Did y'all get y'all get that? He did the wrong thing for the right reason. Did y'all get that? Cost him his life. Oh God help us. And David got mad at that. Thank David back when it just happened to the man that the Lord even know the ark, he hit a pump in the road and the ark shook. And the man that reached up to keep him from falling, and all of a sudden, he died. It's hard for the king to understand. Why would God take him out? Because God's word said, don't touch him. Amen. God was honoring his word. That's right. Can y'all see that? Amen. Whether they did like that or not, he honored. God honored his word. Can y'all see God and what that God has pushed him into? How he's propelled him to the position that he's in. There was a plan, God, that said that my people have been divided, but I got to bring them back together. But when they come back, I got to, my brother cannot come back among them today. Become one. Read on. Verse 8, and David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzziah. Go ahead. Read and he called the name of the place Perez Uzziah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him, unto the, day, unto the city of David. But David carried it aside unto the house of of Obed Edom, the Gittite. Notice what he does. I'm afraid of God. How can I bring it back home? I'm mad at God. And I'm not taking it back to Jerusalem. I tell you what, I'm going to leave it at Obed Edom's house. A Gittite. Not even part of the family. Not a Jew, not Hebrew, but he even part of the family. 
But how many of you know you don't have to be part of the family of the Lord to bless you? Oh, God. Yeah, see, yeah, we are still part of the family. We were Gentiles. Got drafted in through the cross. Did y'all get that? Amen. Thank God for the cross. Amen. Yeah. We wouldn't God's chosen people. It was the Israelite, the Jew, the Hebrew. Amen. Yeah, so he's mad at him. Oh, they, 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 they were mad at God and, and the ark ends up at a Gentile's house. Read on this. 11 verse. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom. What did he do? And all his household. Another word. How many months? Three months. Three months! And it should have been your heart. Did y'all hear what God is saying? For three months, obey Eden from the house of being blessed. Only because the presence of God is in our heart. You don't understand God. Because he's Gentile. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sister. 12 verse. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom. Don't stop right like there. Why it got back to David? You know when you get good news. And you didn't really mess up. Why it got back to him? Since you left that off over at Obed Edom, man, that ought to be a blessed house. All kind of good things are happening in this family. Hallelujah. Can y'all see that? The word had to get back to it though. Why he being mad? God bless him, man. Bless him somebody else when it should have been yours all the time. I like that. Why are you mad at me? God bless it, me. So if that's going to be the case, stay mad. Stay mad, stay mad. If God is going to take me to get my breakthrough, you mad, stay mad. Hallelujah, because God is still opening doors in my life. Hallelujah. Go ahead, says God. And all that pertains to him. Everything pertains to him. Because of the ark of God. Because of what? The ark of the God. The presence of God. Yes, Lord. He's recognized. Ain't nothing taking place. I promise you be mad at it. You better make sure you got a good reason why. This is not his ways is not our ways. He don't think like we think. He don't see like we see. Did y'all get that? He's not gonna line up with you. You are the line up with him. Did y'all hear what God is saying? Hallelujah. Everything that was pertaining to him. Go ahead, sir. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom unto the city of David with gladness. Did y'all get that? So now I heard of God. I heard yes. how God was blessing this man. Yes. Oh, God. I heard how you were blessing this man. I'm going to get it. I'm going to bring it back, y'all. 
Did y'all hear what God just said? Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm going to bring it back now. Yeah, I'm bringing it back to where it's supposed to be at. To Jerusalem. All right, kids, you about ready? Yeah, all right, Trent, you want to be back on your piano right now. Because they're all coming back home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, the song on the Bible, I, I believe, I, 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 I'm redeemed. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. The song y'all were singing, the children were singing. My Redeemer, dear. My Redeemer dear. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get over here, you feel better over here, get over here. Yeah. I want you to be comfortable. Yeah, good one. Yeah, they're all about to come back home. The president's about to come home. Did y'all get that? I won't still be preaching with y'all. All right, so say it on. And it was so that when they who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. In other words, he's bringing the ark back home. They're all get behind here. Come here, here to do y'all here. Come here, help me with it. This is the all here. Yeah, they take it off the eyes of the man there. Yeah, turn the sideways, y'all, folks. Grab up one side of it. Turn it. Yeah, turn it off the eyes of the man there. Yeah, turn it off the eyes of the man there. Yeah, there you go. That's all. That's the presence of God right there. But we need to get back home now. We know what's it. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was buried with the linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shoutings and with the sound of the trumpet. And then he goes, shout!
Thank you, brothers. Hallelujah. Our Redeemer is. And for the presence of God. Can you see how God prepared David to a position that only he could do it in his time? Because Israel was divided and they had to come back together again. And so God knew his heart, a man that was after his heart. There had to be somebody that loved him. Amen. And willing to obey his will in his way. Hallelujah. And so God's plan and purpose, that was part of it. But I'm just showing you from his childhood up until that point. God was raising him for a position. But God had to prepare on him. But look at all he had to go through before he got to where he was. Ups and downs, trials and tests in life. Amen. Hardship. It wasn't all easy. Hallelujah. Then as he got relaxed, he got in trouble. Hallelujah. But how God used this man, a good king, a leader with a heart. Because first of all, he had to love God's grace. Before God could even use him, but he had been tested and tried. Willing to fight the enemy. Didn't know that the very man that he was so in love with, well, with my soul. How this man would turn against him. Hallelujah. But yet, he respected him. In this position that God had. Amen. And he honored God. Because he knew what the word of God had said. Touch not my anointing. And do my prophet no harm. He's willing to do what it took. Until, his, until that opening came. Hallelujah. I'll say this. Even with my own self. Not just use this ministry. And I'm closing. Is that even the position I'm in now with this ministry is pastor. Even though my daddy hadn't passed, but he had turned it over to myself. Through the Holy Spirit. I always honor the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just him doing it, it was the Holy Spirit all the time. In other words, the doctor had really gave up on the told that he wasn't gonna live. Three years before he died, they tell me he put him in hospice and everything else. Don't know if he'll never die. I would, she had this week with the church. I said, they would ask me, how you daddy doing? And I said, well, he may not walk through that door no more. Well, I could have said, boy, I didn't want to tell him what was going on in his life. Yeah, he had cancer then, but I didn't know. I can only tell you what I was, how I saw it, but but yet, he hadn't got things back in order in the house. He hadn't said nobody over the ministry or anything like that, but it had, all it had to give in his life a place. Amen. Before he could pass on. So God raised him up. God raised him back up. And was able to come through that door and that side door. And everybody saw him come through there. Everybody started just, just stop doing what they're doing. They're going to clap in the jar. Pastor Wilson back in the house. But he had to get things in all of them. All that they were here. And so, as he comes through the door, never forget this. I was sitting in that seat there. He walks in and at that time when the pew was on the side. And I see him come in and I start crying. I, 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 I just rejoice in myself. I begin to cry. And he used to sit over there. And I 
Amen. Got that song for us. Hallelujah. You got me hand clap for the word of God.